Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're gonna be checking out this Volcambi Combi Bar, 50 gram bar of gold. It's not a bar, it's actually a card. It's a little credit card and you can break little pieces of gold off. It's good for barter, trade, that sort of thing. So let's talk about it. Okay, so before the video starts, let's go down to the comment section together and let's collectively type in, you can't eat gold or silver. Are you good? Okay, you got it out of your system? Great. I was that guy for many years. I still am that guy. And I'm gonna be doing an in-depth video about gold, silver, SHTF, prepping, survival, all that stuff. It's coming out in two days, but I wanted to get this video out first just because it's a cool, easy novelty video for me to do. So I am gonna break a piece off just because everybody loves watching you break pieces off of these things, I don't know why. Gold is one of those things, man. It's a very enchanting thing. Even though I've never had any inclination towards purchasing precious metals, just because of the rarity of it, that's pretty much it. Sometimes I wonder what will we do if there was no gold on the planet Earth. And there very well could have not have been gold. It almost seems like the conditions have been set up perfectly for civilization to evolve. Because you really do need some extremely rare type of material that you can barter with in order to, to form the basis of civilization. So if this asteroid that seeded the planet with gold, I think that's one of the theories. There's another theory that Maybe it came from the Earth's core or something like that. Whatever the case was, it makes you wonder, you know, what would humanity do? Would we even have evolved without some sort of uh, precious metal to act as a stepping stone towards the modern fiat system and the digital currency and now maybe cryptocurrency, whatever the case might be, makes you wonder. Another interesting factoid about gold is that there's only enough gold in the world right now. I believe there's something like Olympic swimming pool full of gold has been mined in all of human history. Maybe it's three Olympic swimming pools. I can't exactly remember. But in all of human history, not much has been mined. If you divided it evenly amongst everybody, everybody would get 20 grams of gold. So there really isn't a lot of gold to go around. That's about half of this bar of gold. And they also sell these in silver. But as I'm gonna talk about in this upcoming video, uh, silver in this small denomination, at least right now, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. 50 grams of silver is what, 30, 50 bucks, something like that. Whereas something like this, each little square is worth $50 USD. So this is a very condensed way of transporting value. And I'm not here to tell you you should buy this or that you should buy gold at all. I was, you know, not anti-gold, but I, just something that never interested me for the longest time. Had a bit of extra money this year kicking around, so I figured, you know, I could put it into stocks, I could get more preps, or I could just exchange it for gold. And that's what I did. I don't like saying I bought gold because to me, you didn't really buy gold. If anything, you bought paper currency with your gold. You know, if you can get into that kind of thinking because really all you did is exchange value. Now this does come at a premium to buy it like this. So you do pay a bit more over spot price. It's a good denomination, 50 bucks is a nice barterable amount. You could think of a lot of things that you would wanna buy for 50 bucks, be it like, you know, a small amount of food or some gas, especially in tough times. And the other thing is if you had to transport your silver, the equivalent in silver is gonna weigh 100 times this. And I believe it's going to be 150 times the actual volume because silver isn't as dense as gold. So it actually takes up more space. So to be able to transport this much value in silver would be very hard to do. This is something, once I take it out and show you, I'll be able to keep it in my wallet. Now, am I gonna do that? Obviously not. By the time this video goes live, this thing is going to be hidden in the nether regions of somewhere, und undisclosed location. The reason why I would buy this over a gold coin is because of the denominations, but also each one of these little one gram pieces has an official you know, stamp of approval on it. You know, it says one gram fine gold. It's probably gonna be easier to barter with something like that rather than you just having a few little chunks of gold that are unmarked that somebody has to weigh out. At least you know that this is legit, it's official. And I believe they give you like 0.5 extra grams throughout the whole bar to make up for the fact that when you break some off, 
you're gonna be losing milligrams. You know, it might be off by a few milligrams, but they account for that by adding a few milligrams to each piece. First off, I wanna say that I don't think buying gold and silver is the best thing for most people. While the economy is good, you're probably better off investing in something else. This isn't really an investment. If anything, it's just there to hold value. Yes, there may come a point where the price of gold and silver is going to spike. That's what a lot of the silver stackers are waiting for. Obviously, silver has a lot of industrial applications. And I've learned an interesting thing the other day that there's actually more silver in the world above ground than there is gold. And that's because silver has all these industrial applications. So it's constantly being used and it doesn't get recycled because it's just not worth it to go and extract you know, the fine amounts of silver out of these electronics that we just throw in the garbage dumps. But there's also like 10 times more silver mined every year and there's 17.5 times more silver in the ground, which is probably more accessible than there is gold out there. But consider how much preps a person could get for this. This is the equivalent of around $3,300 Canadian. With $3,300 Canadian, you could be set up for six months to a year you could have your means of security, uh, means of defense. You could have uh, food, water, first aid supplies, shelter, and a lot of other gimmicky stuff if you wanted. Gold is only worth something when there's a surplus of resources. Having a means of exchange doesn't come about in an economy until you have a surplus of resources. Because until that point, you're just bartering with stuff. Okay, so if, let's say there was a famine, and there was little amounts of food to go around. Well, nobody is going to accept gold in those conditions because they're gonna to want to you know, exchange their goods or services for either food or something tangible, something practical that they can actually use. Gold only gets valuable when there's an extra abundance of stuff that people are willing to part ways with. So when things are scarce, you know, gold really doesn't have a whole lot of value to it. I think that gold will be accepted in the short term, not in the medium term when things are getting really bad. And then maybe in the long, long term when things kind of rebound a bit and there's a bit more a new economy that's born like a market, a trading post, whatever you want to call it. If, if you're talking about full blown Mad Max, it would have to be like a barter town situation. Obviously gold and silver will be sought after because of their rarity, because you can't fake them, you can't counterfeit it. But if you're in a bug out type situation, I can't imagine anything better than this. Now, the problem with that is that right when somebody sees that you have this, you potentially make yourself a target. So obviously you have to use discretion with regards to who you're, you're bartering with. That might limit you to not being able to use this in most situations. So there's the security aspect, right? This is a lot of value in a very dense package. Now there's ways around that. Like if you were gonna go and barter with some people, you could stash this first, you know, in case, or you could hide it somewhere and just break off what you needed or something like that. There are ways that, that you could probably maneuver that sort of situation in a safe way but that would be one potential drawback. Now they have silver Volcambis, which are broken into 10 gram increments, which would roughly translate into five to $7, I guess, depending on the price of silver at the time. What are you really gonna buy with five to seven bucks that you really need? I think if anything, you're gonna be working in $50 to $100 increments if you find yourself in an economic crisis barter situation. So, and I think a lot of people, just the allure of gold, is uh, going to be a bit better, which is why I purchased this. Maybe you're never gonna be in a situation where the conditions are gonna be such that you're gonna be able to barter for food or ammunition with something like this, because those things are gonna be very precious commodities in times of great distress. But I could foresee a situation where someone had medicine, gasoline, hygiene products, uh, child care, feminine hygiene products, or diapers or something like that where something like this could come in handy because that's something that people can part ways with. Now, obviously as a prepper, you should never have to barter for your bare necessities, but there may be a situation when you are forced to bug out. Maybe your house burns down, especially if you're living on the fault lines, you, you may not be able to carry all your preps, but you can always carry this. You can't carry $3,000 worth of food 
but you can carry a $3,000 gold card in your pocket. That being said, what this can buy you now is gonna be much different than what it's gonna be able to buy you after crap hits the fan. This may only buy you $500 worth of food by today's standards in, time, in times of scarcity. But now, of course, this money can buy you a lot more. So those are things to keep in mind and that's what I'm gonna be talking about in this upcoming video. And once again, I wanna say that I'm not suggesting that anybody go out and buy these. This is just show and tell. Who doesn't like gold? I don't even know why I like gold. It's just, there's something about knowing that you have something that is so rare. It makes me wanna melt it into some object and worship it. Just kidding. That's the one thing I've always hated about gold is people who fetishize, is that a right word, fetishize? People who obsess about it, maybe I didn't get into it because I was worried that that would overtake me, but I could see how this stuff drives people insane. You know, there was a movie I watched, it was an old Western movie. There was a guy who found this big gold nugget and him and his buddy were prospecting and, and his buddy was willing to split it 50-50, but he said, no, I was the one who found it. Like I was the one who seen it first, so I should get more. And it turned out that they both ended up fighting and the one guy died or something. And you know, that's it. Gold just makes people nuts. Imagine how many people throughout history this drove nuts. Imagine how many forms this gold right here has taken. This may be freshly mined gold, but there's a good chance that this was the same gold somewhere else in the world that was in some other form. Maybe it was in a gold coin during the Roman era, you know, so it has a lot of history to it, but I can see how this stuff drives people crazy, which is why for the longest time I haven't wanted anything to do with it. This will be the only uh, precious metal, especially gold, that I ever buy. To be brutally honest, I just can't foresee myself buying any more than this. Now, in terms of like the gear review or product review aspect of this, uh, one thing I don't like about it off the hop is that it's in this cheap plastic. You would think for something which was like a $2,500 street value, you think that that would come in even like a, like a thin Altoids tin or, or something like that with maybe a, a velvet, you know, interior to sit this in. You know, something better than this because you can't reclose this. Once you cut this plastic open, you can't reseal it. That's my main problem with it. And you certainly wouldn't want to put this in your wallet as is because pieces could break off and, and fall off. And obviously you don't want to be losing little chunks of gold. So I'm going to be making an elite bug out bag video soon. And you know what's going in it. There was this video on YouTube. I think it was hundred thousand dollar bug out bag or something. And the majority of that was just some gold that was in the bug out bag. It was the dumbest video ever because I think next to the gold, they had some cheap Daytrex rations. And you know that anybody could, who could afford this bug out bag would never reduce themselves to eating Daytrex bars. They just wouldn't be able to do it. I don't know. Maybe I'm not giving the rich enough credit for the the stuff that they have to go through. If you're a self-made rich person, you could probably reduce yourself to eating, surviving off Daytrex bars. Hell, anybody if you're starving. I'll post a link to that ridiculous video below. Let's cut this open and see what all the fuss is about. So I got my professional curator gloves on, nitrile gloves, because I don't want to damage the precious metals. Actually, it's because uh, it's been a long, long month with Black Friday and all, and my fingernails are probably chewed to the bone and it's embarrassing, so don't judge me. I'm gonna crack this open with the Leatherman multi-tool because this is a prepping channel. And that's how we do. You can see that there, that's just the instructions. Look at that nice, look at that sheen. I, it's no wonder why people go crazy over this stuff. So what we're gonna do actually, cause this really wants to come off, so I'm gonna set that free. You have to cut it open, there's no other way to do it. It's not resealable. I'm just gonna have to go like this. Test out the Leatherman scissors. So let's cut it all the way around. It looks like it's got a number on it here, number 123916. I don't know if that's just a lot number. Ooh, wow. Yeah, it feels, feels amazing. I really don't want to destroy this, but this is for education. This is for YouTube. It's for science. 
Now you're gonna see how dirty the rest of the room is in that reflection. Damn. Volcambi. Swiss. I feel like I should do this in a Swiss accent to make a good review. Now I just sound Russian. Anytime I try to do a European accent, it always turns into Russian. People are just like, get to the damn breaking of the gold already. What I have to do before I, I do this, I gotta do the thumbnail. So we got the selfie for the thumbnail. Hopefully between that and this beautiful mug of mine, we can recoup our costs. All right, let's do a quick size comparison here. First glance, this looks a bit wider, but it actually is the exact same width as the credit card. And I would say it's probably only about a millimeter thick. It's not entirely flat. I'm not sure if you can see that there. It's kind of bent. They're not so easy that they're gonna just fall off, but they will, you know, break off. So let's get it on here. I like that you have to work it in a few times. Oh, I think I just felt her snap. Okay, there we go. So this is five grams of gold. This is 250 US dollars right here. It's that little amount. Let's break off a little tiny one. Why the hell not? I'll give it to somebody for Christmas. $50 worth of gold right there. The equivalent in silver, obviously it's gonna be about 130 to 150 times more volume. You're looking at something twice this size and thicker if you want the equivalent in silver. I really think this was made with the prepper in mind because obviously we're not going back to a barter or gold-based economy in anything short of an economic collapse. This is a currency that's gonna be accepted anywhere in the world and it's off the books. Honestly, you could do well to never ever have to go down the road of precious metals and you would still be as prepared as you needed to be. I'm never gonna be somebody who encourages people to stack precious metals. So long as you have your food, water, and shelter and all that stuff taken care of, you'll probably be fine. Uh, the only situation I guess where you wouldn't is if you still had rule of law and the bankers wanted the money for their mortgage and you know the dollar had crashed or something and all your money went up in smoke and if this is all you had you know this might save you in that kind of situation in a half collapse scenario but it uh, may not save you in a full collapse scenario where resources may not be available to buy with something like this so like i said i think in the short term and the really long term this may be useful but in the medium term, full-blown collapse, this ain't gonna help you that much. You're gonna want your beans, bullets, and band-aids first and foremost. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care, Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps. Have a Merry Christmas. Enjoy the time you have with your family, but stay ready.